All right, so in this video, we're going to show how to make a simple trend using the Drive Windows software from ABB. And it was, this will be using an ACS 800 Drive Trainer. Um, now, granted, this is going to be, if you currently look, I am going to be running the uh, under information. You can see that I'm running firmware seven. So the firmware seven module or the firmware seven firmware uh, manual will work just fine. And this is what the firmware uh, looks like. So as far as this goes though, we, we, we're gonna talk about how to make a simple trend right in the very bottom. And what we need to understand here is what we're gonna trend is actual values. There's three things. So, so you can do the motor speed filtered which is a filter that you can put that there's filter parameters you can do for that there's the estimated speed and there's the measured speed measured speed is going to be based upon the actual um, encoder so if you don't have an encoder don't use me a measured speed i highly don't recommend that anyway if you're using an any kind of control system like a coordinated motion system probably not best you use an encoder anyway use it if you have an encoder you can use it for feedback only um, but don't use it for control um, not in my opinion unless you're running extremely high inertia things with low like really extreme low speed so um, with that said though we want to come in and put like say for instance our speed filter in there uh, we can come in here and do like uh, look at the voltage we can come in here throw the voltage in here and that's a couple key things like let's just say we're making this for like an id run we, we can easily come in here and do that so when you look at the speeds and look at the the filters you need to understand the speed and we're going to come down here for the motor speed the motor rpm speed and this is going to be parameter 99 startup data and in that data you can see that parameter uh, 9902 is going to show you the voltage 9903 going to show you the current and uh, parameter 9904 will show you the, uh, op the frequency currently, which is 50. And uh, 9905 is going to be the motor uh, R max RPMs. So that's the max RPMs. This is all, all information you get from the motor data um, on the nameplate of the motor. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> so what we can do, being that we know that the uh, max RPMs is 1300, um, we can scale it here if we wanted to, um, but again, when it comes down to it, this is a trainer, so uh, it's going to be a little bit different firmware the way things work. Um, on the actual, you know, ACS 800, the bigger drives and stuff like that, you you can easily scale it that way. What I'm going to do is actually scale. Um, I'm going to take the minimum to zero. I'm going to take the maximum to 1360. And that way you can see that. Now to get these scaled right, if you want to scale them right, you can, let's just say for instance, you wanted to have like uh, 1500 or something like that. You can get nice even numbers in here. Um, or we can just go to, let's just say 1400. And, but see at that point, you, you still don't re really reach good numbers. Um, but we'll keep this right. We'll keep what we have. 1400 is perfectly fine. Now what we want to do <clears throat> is we can actually start our trend and, and start running it. We can do a little test um, and just say, for instance, we want to clear our fault on our drive. Let's go ahead and put in like, let's just say 560 for that matter. And then we'll start the, we'll start the actual uh, trend. You have to start the trend up top, but you see the motor is actually running so you can see that right here. Now let's stop the motor itself. Actually, what we were seeing right there, the motor actually wasn't running. Um, let's see why the motor wasn't running. So 60, enter. <clears throat> now we have it in, entered in. What we're seeing up here is the actual, um, the actual uh, DC voltage. So we'll come in here and we'll start the drive running. And now you can see it ramping up. So you can see the, the red is the RPMs 
and currently the DC is the black so that's the D DC voltage so we just we can make sure we have the right voltage in there now what I do want to show too is I want to show a ID run like say for instance you want to trend an ID run so we'll come in here and actually do that we'll show that right here a um, couple things you need to know about an ID run I'm going to go ahead and clear the, the trend right here <clears throat> with an ID run let's just say we come over here and this ID runs are done in DTCs and really need to be done for DTC um, when you change a motor anytime you change a motor or anytime you're doing drive commissioning or anytime you're doing uh, motor commissioning that you need to do ID runs now ABB does say that you can get by with one standard run I say that you need to do at least three and those have to be uncoupled so with that said you go into ID run and I'll show you real quick that there in the current firmware that I have it says no ID run or it says standard or reduced or our current calculated you will see on a di on depending upon what firmware you're running on different drives bigger drives will have standard reduced and standstill standstill is never to be used honestly in my opinion um, <clears throat> always you can run reduced um, but that's gonna again and you have that run you run it coupled like that and that's on rare instances I highly recommend you always do standard where you uncouple every time to uncouple the drive from the, the load that it will be driven right so I always want to do standard now it will not take being that we we're, we're not so keep in mind you have to be in manual mode for the parameter to take so now if I if I come over here and do it again now that it's in manual mode you can see that I go to standard and I go right here it goes yellow down here it says it's ready for the ID run what we want to do is we'll start our ID run we'll start the actual trend and what we're gonna see is the motor RPMs are not gonna there what what's happening right now is it's 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 uh, magnetizing the stator okay it's magnetizing and now it's going to run up to 80% of the drive rating. Okay, so it's going to run up to 80% of the drive rating, run down, run back up, and then run back a couple times. So this is, and this is a not a permanent magnet motor. So what's going to happen is, again, this is going to be your standard uh, trend that you see on a non-permanent magnet motor. <clears throat> now, with that said, the trend will look a little bit different on a permanent magnet motor than it does on a non-permanent magnet motor. Now, this is a non this is a non-permanent magnet motor, so all of those all these should look just the same as what we're showing right here. Okay, so with that said, you can easily see that what the the red is the RPMs and that's about that's what it should do to do an ID run. Now, <clears throat> the purpose of an ID run is to is for the drive to learn the motor attributes and that does imply how long that will take could it 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 will take based upon how long your cable is how long how big your motor is and all the attributes of that <clears throat> this was a very quick test and this was a very you know, like generally speaking it will be anywhere from one minute to about five minutes to do an id run <clears throat> on a bigger motor or in a, a long cable set this is a very short cable set obviously it's a, just a trainer so it's a, it's the cable is probably less than three foot um, with that said though this is the trend that you will see and again <clears throat> like I said we do three of them so if I come over here and go into standard again and I come over here and clear this and let's just get rid of DC voltage so that it looks nice and clean and again we'll start the ID run it's gonna magnetize the stator magnet and get everything ready and then it's gonna shoot up to its 80% of its ra rated range so now it will take off in, in RPMs and then you can see that okay so again it's gonna run up to 80% of its natural RPMs that you have listed inside the drive parameters which is again should match your actual motor so in the case of what we're doing, this is always to match the, the 
what what the motor nameplate says. So if it's if the RPMs on the motor nameplate differ, if it's like 1194 or something like that, then you put in 1194, right? And you need that needs to be into your drive parameters. But in our case, this is a 1360 motor, so that's that's what we're going to see. That's what we're going to actually um, we're going to see 80 percent of that. But with that said, that's that's basically uh, how to set up a trend if you want to see how the ID run. Um, now, why why would you do this? Uh, for me personally, I like to take screen captures every time I do an ID run. Every time we replace a motor, I do three ID runs. I make a, a simple little Word document of how each one did, and then afterwards you can do like like you can run different uh, speed like uh, like speed steps and stuff like that. Like you can you know run it up to whatever the voltage is or whatever the the RPMs you want to run. And then step it up to see how the tuning is generally you do that on a tuning stage instead of uh, a uh, id run but again i'm a, a big component of doing three id runs the reason is for that is because basically the first id run is a cold the windings are windings are cold the second id run the windings are hotter the third id runs the windings are are, are at their going to be or they're going to be close to their normal operating range so you're going to get a different resistance reading and that's going to change your motor model <clears throat> the motor model is made with the id run and this is what they call the inner the id run is the inner loop right so it's not the outer it's not the outer loop the outer loop is the the kpes and the tis and that's done basically in your control um, so that's the KPS and the TIS. That's not what we're doing here. The what we're doing is the motor model, and again, that's making the drive understand the motor attributes. And you can look at that in in your motor model, which is parameter 26. You can see right here. You got your coefficients. You got your zero gain. Um, you got everything you need. You got your resistance right here. Um, you got everything about the motor that is currently in there. Now you don't have to change any of this stuff. You can change all this stuff, but what happens is this gets changed from your ID run. Okay, so there's no need to change this afterwards. So with that said, um, hopefully you learned a lot from this video and we'll see you guys on the next one.